don't want to correct the false statement. The gentleman yields back well seeks recognition. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I move Fence and Brennan. For what purpose does Mr. Fence Chairman, I move to strike the last word. It is recognized. I yield the gentleman from Texas. appreciate my colleague yielding to correct the record where the Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee just made a false statement. Said that I said that it was okay to solicit foreign interference in an election. I never used the word interference. Okay. I said foreign involvement in investigations. And I used as an example for that the Obama administration. It was just a few hours ago, you may not remember. I can't believe we're sitting here at the end of this. An impeachment inquiry in the House of Representatives, and I look at how all of this started. It started with a phone call, a congratulatory phone call between two presidents. And the very next day, someone contacted someone, and a week later, someone walked into the office of Chairman Schiff. And that person walked out a week later, a whistleblower, went to the Inspector General and filed a complaint where they falsely claimed that President Trump had made a demand of President Zelensky. They made a false statement in writing, and then they made a false statement verbally in the course of what should have been an investigation. We sit here today about to vote on impeaching a president where neither the House Judiciary Committee, the House Intelligence Committee, or any House committee where the Democrats are in charge has asked a single question of a single witness about how this started. Because you go back to that phone call, and the two people that were on it, the only two people that know not just what they said, but what they meant when they said it. And they both said it was a great call. So first let me say I'm sorry. Let me say I'm sorry to the president of Ukraine. I'm sorry that as a result of all of this, you've been labeled a pathological liar by my Democratic colleagues. And I'm sorry that they pretend to care about the Ukraine, but they've just made it incredibly hard and more difficult for your country ever to get military assistance. I'm also sorry to the other person that was on that call who knew what he said when he meant it, President Trump. I'm sorry, President Trump, that you've tried to keep every promise. You've given us a great economy, and you did it against incredible headwinds where you were falsely accused of treason. You were accused of being a Russian agent by the folks in this room. And when that failed, we sit here today because now they're framing you because you said, I'd like you to do us a favor, though, because our country has been through a lot. My last apology is to the American people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you've had to view this spectacle. I'm sorry to the 63 million of you that are so deplorable that as a result of this, you're being told your votes don't count. I yield back. I yield back as well. Gentlemen, he yields back. Does anyone else seek recognition of this amendment? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Recognition. For what purposes, Mr. Reschenthal, seek recognition? Let's check the last word, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, he's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've been here uh, a while, and I do want it to be noted that I do have several other amendments uh, for tonight. But speaking on this amendment, I'm speaking in support of my colleague Jim Jordan's amendment. <clears throat> but I think that we are getting way too caught up in the weeds in particular. So we got to just zoom out and think about why we're here. We're here because the Democrats, again, are terrified that the president is going to win re-election. <clears throat> Let's just go through a list of his accomplishments. Donald Trump signed the largest scale criminal justice reform legislation in decades. In decades. And I should add, if it weren't for 
this, with this waste of time with impeachment, we could be working on more bipartisan criminal justice reform. Uh, particularly, I have a criminal justice bill called Clean Slate that would expunge non-violent felony offenses for for hundreds of thousands of individuals. Uh, Lisa Blunt Rochester is working with me on that. She's a Democrat, as you know. But anyhow, I digress again. Donald Trump is also ensuring our warfighters can be warfighters. I was a defense attorney in the Navy. Um, I actually defended a Navy SEAL who was falsely accused of covering up abuse on a well-known terrorist. And I can tell you that when our warfighters are dragged into the court-martial process, they have to constantly then second-guess themselves on the battlefield. And finally, we have a president that is recognizing that warfighters should be warfighters and they should be focused on capturing and killing targets, not worrying about wrongful prosecutions back at home.